have a sequence of several events, we can organise the rules for adding and multiplying probabilities for OR and AND most easily by using a tree diagram. And let me illustrate this with two examples. First one, let's roll two dice and think about how many sixes might come up. On the first roll, we might get a six or not a six, and the chances are one sixth and five sixths. That's the first roll, the first throw of the dice. And then whatever we get on the first experiment, we can then repeat it, we can roll the dice again. And if we've got a six first time, we might get a six next time, or not a six. And equally, if we didn't get a six first time, we might still get a six the second time, or not a six. And the probabilities haven't changed. One six and five six, one six and five six. Now the rules that we've seen before said that if you want two events both to happen, you multiply the probabilities. So if you want a 6 and a 6, we have a 6 times a 6, which is 1 36. If I want a 6 and then not a 6, it's going to be a 6 times 5 6, which is 5 36. If I want the not 6 and then a 6, it's the other way around, which is still 5 36. And then the chance of not a 6, and again not a 6, is going to be 5, 6 times 5, 6, which is 25, 36. Now we might not be bothered which order things come in, so suppose we simply wanted the probability of 1, 6 in two rolls of the dice. So the probability of 1, 6 in two rolls. How can I get 1, 6? Well, I could have got it here, and the chance was 5, 36. Or, I could have got it on this alternative sequence, where I got it as a second throw. Again, that was 5, 36. And because it's or, because these are alternative scenarios, we add the probabilities. So we get 5, 36 plus 5, 36 which is 10.36, or 5 eighteenths. So we multiply along the branches, we add the alternative branches. Now let's look at a slightly different scenario. Suppose we have 10 people, 3 men and 7 women, and we want to choose 2 people, a pair from that. So, choose 2 people, from three men and seven women. Let's look at the first choice, the first person we choose, and then we'll do the second one. First time, we choose a man or a woman. There are three men out of the ten, so the chance that we get a man is three tenths, the chance that we get a female is seven tenths. Then again, we can choose a man or a woman for our second person. But this time the probabilities have changed. If the first person we chose was a man, out of the nine people left, there are only two men available to choose. And so the probability, if we're selecting at random, of getting a man is 2 out of 9. There are still 7 women left, so that's 7 ninths. Whereas if the first person had been a woman, there are still 3 men left out of the 9, but there's only 6 women left, so the chance to get a woman is 6 ninths. So in this case, the probabilities have changed, and we talk about conditional probabilities the conditional probability of getting a man, conditional on the fact that we got a man first time. 
If we now multiply along our branches like we did before, we get 3 tenths times 2 ninths, which is going to be 6 ninetieths. And then we get 3 tenths times 7 ninths, which is 21 ninetieths. And then 7 tenths times 3 ninths, also 21 ninetieths. And then 7 tenths times 6 ninths, which is 42 ninetieths. You can always check a tree diagram by making sure that all the probabilities add up to 1. We must have got one of these outcomes. So here we have 6 and 21 is 27, 48 and 42 is 90 ninetieths. So those do add up to 1. We could have checked that here. How many 36? 1 and 5 is 6, 11 and 25 is 36, 36. Adds up to 1. So they're OK. And now let's again see what happens if we want a particular number, but we're not worried what order. The probability that we get one man, well, it could have been that branch, 21 ninetieths, or this branch, and or means plus. So in this case, we get 42 ninetieths, which cancels to 7 fifteenths. And so the tree diagrams are a very useful way of organising the information and of noting when successive probabilities change or when they don't, multiplying along the branches and adding all the branches that give the required outcome. So let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? Okay, well, I want x on its own. So I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself. But what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.